Well, good morning, guys. Uh, we're back at it again here. Uh, we got a unit in with multiple issues. Uh, on this one, we had uh, ordered a radiator for it. Uh, it barely came in, so we're gonna, we went ahead and brought it in. I'm going to go ahead and replace that radiator on this one. Uh, I'm going to replace that uh, DPF filter on it. It's a little clogged, and, uh, she's gonna, and uh, hopefully we can get it out of here by 2.30. So let me go ahead and get started. Well, guys, on this one, it's uh, it drained the fluids, of course. After we drain the fluids, of course, uh, the reservoir comes off. All the hoses come off. It's got two bolts holding it there, and of course, on the other side, uh, hood has to be uh, something has to be propped in front of the hood to keep it from, you know, cracking open. Uh, we need to loosen those cables to be able to extract this radiator out. There's a couple of brackets here and there, stuff like that. Everything stays, fan, pump, all that stays in there. Uh, fan guard stays in the unit. Only it comes out is that radiator. After we extract. We pretty much got uh, most of it done. All we got now, we remove that bolt, remove those cables, intercooler, both sides, both hoses. Uh, we still got to get that radiator hose from the bottom. And then, of course, we got the lower radiator on that side and the bottom also. We got to get those two. And over here in front, we have those transmission fuel lines. Uh, I'll leave those to the end because they tend to make a little bit of a mess, trying to get the unstuck. stuff. So uh, I do have to get those. And as you can see, uh, our radiator is resting on those stitch tools, such as that stick ladders, and we have enough space to get that cherry picker in here, engine hoist, and lift that thing out of here. As you can see, it stays in place. It stays in place. Basically, this thing is just going to lean forward just a bit. Part of the fan guard is going to come with it, and then you bring it out. So let me go ahead and get the rest of this stuff. I'm not going to use a camera because it gets a little messy, but... Well, guys, uh, we went ahead and got all the hoses and everything disconnected, so let's try and see if we can, uh, we can actually hoist this uh, radiator out of here. All right. Shroud has to come off, and then we have uh, like 18 of these suckers. On, there's six on each side, on both sides, it's 24 bolts. We don't take them all out, we take these out, the middle ones out, and then the very, very bottoms. We just loosen them. We gotta open this case and get this intercooler out so that we can go ahead and extract that radiator out of that crater and then reinstall the new one. Let me go ahead and uh, do that real quick. Uh Well guys, uh, this is the radiator that we got. We got this one from AutoZone because AutoZone, uh, they sell the radiators there, all aluminum. We don't have plastic covers on these. These are all aluminum compared to the original plastic cover radiators. Uh, I just think the aluminum radiators, 
body going to outperform and uh, last a little bit longer than those plastic covers. So let me go ahead and open this one up real quick. Well guys, there we go. That's a hollow aluminum radiator. And uh, they also send us, uh, these are the connectors that go in front of the radiator for your transmission cooler lines. And these little um, radiator little, uh, I don't know, molded little mounts, rubber bushings, whatever you want to call them. And we have a little pit card valve in there, and we have a nip that, that goes off the side if you are needed. On the, in this case, we don't use these. That one stays plugged up. The rest we do use. Pit card goes in the bottom, the two radiator hoses, and of course, transmission cooler lines go in front of the radiator. So let me go ahead and get that sucker back in that case. I am going to replace those little uh, rubber, little uh, mounts, bushings, whatever you want to call them. So let me go ahead and get to this. these little tabs straighten them out try this out install your new one it's got these little tabs that you insert through those little four holes and then you bent them on the other side that'll keep it in place so it doesn't fall off one and we do the same to the other side So guys, uh, radiator is all assembled. We got that new one back in its cradle. Put it back together. So now it's time to let me go ahead and hoist it back into the unit. Uh, radiators in. I already put the little mounts and bolts. They're just hand tied for now, but just to make sure that it doesn't move or look like that. Uh, fan shroud fit right into place. All I gotta do now is, uh, of course, all those hoses that go on over here in front, cooler line go on, reservoir tank, and basically it's just connect everything back together. So. Uh, I'm not okay, so, uh all we got to do now is uh, get those cables back on the hood so we can go ahead and take those stick ladders out of the way and uh, add the cooler, make sure it's got no leaks and uh, basically we're done. So uh, let me go ahead and do all that. Well guys, uh, we extracted roughly, we drained roughly like maybe close to six gallons, a little bit under six gallons. And now that we're replacing the radiator, uh, I went ahead and poured 
every blue bucket that I pour in is two and a half gallons roughly. I poured three complete buckets, so basically that radiator is now holding a little over seven gallons. I am going to go ahead and take apart that radiator. I'm, I'm just curious to know how many of those cells were clogged up or why it was holding less water. I want to see how much debris is in there. So I'm going to go ahead and tear open that one and I'll show you. Well guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and dismantle this radiator, see what the hell went wrong with it. And uh, I just want to look at the inside, see how much crud is in there. Uh, let me tear it apart. roughly we drained roughly like maybe close to six gallons a little bit under six gallons and now that we're replacing the radiator uh, I went ahead and poured every blue bucket that I poured in is two and a half gallons roughly I poured three complete buckets so basically that radiator is now holding a little over seven gallons I am going to go ahead and take apart that radiator. I'm, I'm just curious to know how many of those cells were clogged up or why it was holding less water. I want to see how much debris is in there. So I'm going to go ahead and tear open that one and I'll show you guys why we removed it and replaced it and what goes on on the inside of the radiator. All right, guys, uh, we're, going to go, we're going to go ahead and call it quits on this one, guys. It's done. So uh, appreciate you guys watching. Like and subscribe.